There's a new event coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Seven Star Poison Terra Swampert is the latest Terra Raid boss. Here's everything you need to know. Welcome back to another Dan Squared video, you Danimals. The seamless, endless parade of starter Pokemon being featured in Seven Star Terra Raids continues on with Swampert. That does make me hopeful that Seven Star Sceptile is coming soon. Swampert is Terra type poison, so it will finally not be times four weak to Leaf Blade from Sceptile. I am a bit disappointed though, because we've already seen a Poison Terra uh, Pokemon being featured in 7 Star Terra Raids, but we still have not seen a 7 Star Terra Raid with a Dark type or Electric type. Hopefully we see that soon. I'm really hoping we get some more interesting Terra Raids soon. I really think that Terra Raids could be a great way to unshiny lock Pokemon like Coridon or Miridon. I've said it once, I've said it a million times. We have had that Zero Aura event in Pokemon Sword and Shield. If 1 million trainers defeated Zero Aura, Everybody got a shiny Zera Aura. What better way to unshiny lock Pokemon than a really fun Terra Raid event? The starter Pokemon with the Mightiest Mark, it's just not doing it for me, but I still love Terra Raids, so I'm here for the people. Before we talk about how we're going to defeat Swampert, let's take a little bit of a look at Swampert itself. Seven Star Swampert's a bit of a tricky Terra Raid to prepare for because I think it's going to be a mixed attacker. I know it has a better base attack of 110 versus special attack of 85, when I think of Swampert, I think of my Gen 3 playthroughs, I think of Surf. It has access to a bunch of different special attacking moves, so I'll be really surprised if it's just strictly a physical attacker. Its defense and special defense are exactly the same, so depending on whether or not Swampert gets something like Amnesia or Curse, we'll inform our decisions based on if we want to go with uh, physical attackers or special attackers. It's a pretty slow Pokemon with a base speed of 60, so we should pretty much always be outspeeding it. Its hidden ability, Damp, does not matter because please do not use moves like uh, self destruct or explode in terror raids you're not gonna have a fun time and you'll need more help in this video the most interesting part of preparing for swampert is its typing swampert is normally a water and ground type pokemon but in this seven star terror raid it's going to be poison typing what do all these types have in common they all have one type or an ability that grants pokemon immunity to it steel type pokemon will be immune to swampert's poison type attacks Flying-type Pokemon will be immune to Swampert's ground-type attacks, or if they hold the air balloon like Hisui and Gudra did against Venusaur. And then lastly with Water-type, we all know there's a ton of different Pokemon that have Water Absorb or Storm Drain. We just saw that uh, it was a big factor in the 7-star Primarina Terra Raids. There are two types that hit Poison-type Pokemon for super effective damage. That is Psychic and Ground Pokemon. Swampert has some pretty great built-in coverage for Ground Pokemon being a Water-type. Psychic-type Pokemon are Seven Star Swampert's glaring weakness. Yeah, it does get Knockoff, which could provide some coverage, but Knockoff works weird in Terror Raids. It doesn't make us lose our item when we get hit, but I'm pretty confident that it also still retains that bonus. So Knockoff could be hitting us for a base 130 damage without Stab, so maybe it's a problem, maybe not. I think Psychic Pokemon, in particular Stored Power users, are going to have an absolute field day against 7 Star Swampert. Now that we know what we're up against, let's take a look at some of the Pokemon that we're going to use to take down Swampert. Here's a high level overview of 4 Pokemon that you can use in online group raids to defeat 7 Star Swampert. Remember to check back for the channel after the 7 Star Swampert Terror Raid starts for my consistent, accessible solo build for the people. I'll be uh, putting that in the pinned comment down below. I will be live as soon as the 7 Star Swampert Terror Raid starts. That's going to be Thursday, May 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here on YouTube. So make sure to join live and help me discover the most consistent and accessible solo build for the people. But right now we're going to go through the attacking Bronzong, mixed support attacking Quacksire, support Cresselia, and support Corviknight that you can use to catch your Swampert the Unrivaled in group raids. Let's get right into these builds. First up is Bronzong, which will be boasting two immunities to Swampert's moves as a Steel-type Pokemon before it terrestrializes. It's going to be immune to Swampert's Poison-type moves, and thanks to that ability Levitates, we're going to be immune to any of Swampert's Ground-type moves. I'm going with the, the Psychic Terra-type to hit for super effective damage, and the Shell Bell held item for some recovery. For the EV spread, I'm going with Max HP EVs, Max Special Attack EVs, and the Final Four in Defense. I'm recording this before the Terror Raid starts, so I like HP EVs because I think Swampert could be a mixed attacker. If it ends up only being a physical attacker or we're only worried about uh, physical attacking moves, we can switch those over to defense EVs for an extra boost. Max IVs and all stats except for attack and a modest nature to further increase our special attack while lowering our attack. 
As mentioned earlier, the Levitate ability is one of the keys to this build. It gives us immunity to Swampert's ground type attacks. Stored Power is this build's main attacking move. It is a Terror Raid staple. It has a pedestrian base power of 20, but for every single stage that our stats are raised, that base power increases by an additional 20 with no cap. So that's a plus 40 for every time we use Calm Mind, in addition to raising our special attack and special defense by one stage. Metal Sound softens up Swampert for Stored Power, and Reflect will increase the physical bulk of Bronzong and its allies because we are more scared of Swampert's physical attacking moves. Again, if for some reason it ends up being a special attacker, we can rock with the light screen for this fourth move. A special shout out to the Danimal Link, that is who this Bronzong is named after. Not only have they helped out with a ton of different Terror Raid build videos, but they also taught me how to shiny hunt in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thank you, Link. Quagsire is my lone Terra ground counter in the preview. It's going to use this Shell Bell held item for some recovery. I'm choosing Quagsire because of the ability Water Absorb, which gives it an immunity to Swampert's water type attacks. As for EVs, we're going max special attack again, max HP, and the final four in defense, max IVs in all of our stats except for attack and the modest nature once again to further increase our special attacking power. This is a really versatile mixed supporting attacking set. We have Mud Slap and Chilling Water to increase the survivability of Quaxar and its allies. Mud Slap will lower the accuracy so the attacks will miss. If it can't hit us, can't hurt us. But if it does hit us, we have Chilling Water to further lower its attack. If for some reason Swampert ends up being a full special attacker, I don't know, crazier things have happened, uh, we can give it Eerie Impulse instead of Chilling Water. Now Quaxire can do some damage as well. Acid Spray will soften up Swampert for uh, our special attacking allies and to sneakily do a lot of damage with Earth Power. I think Quaxire is going to be a really great mix supporter in these group raids. I don't think it'll have the, the oomph to really get it done in solos, but I love it as a utility Pokemon in group raids here. Cresselia is the first of the two strictly support Pokemon I'm including on the list. I'm keeping it Psychic Terror because as you'll see, even though its main role is support, it may be able to sneakily do a bit of Psychic Terror damage with Psychic. Our held item we're going with Light Clay to increase the duration of Reflect from 5 to 8 turns. Why Cresselia? I'm picking it because of the ability Levitate that will give us an immunity to one of uh, Swampert's types of attacks, Ground Sight and we just have to worry about poison and water damage. As for EVs, I'm going HP and defense with a bold nature to give us a ton of physical bulk, because again, we're more worried about Swampert as a physical attacker. Max IVs and all of his stats, except for attack. You could give it a modest nature if you want to make a more offensive mind to Cresselia, and let's do more damage with Psychic, because after we're done setting up with Reflect and setting up Psychic Terrain, we can start swinging with Psychic. So Psychic Terrain will increase the power of the Psychic type moves on our field, side of the field by 50%. Nice. And then Reflect, that increases the physical bulk of all of our allies. Lunar Blessing will heal the status conditions of our teammates. So if Poison Terror Swamper wants to poison us, we can get rid of that from our allies and give some nice healing. And if we already got the terrain up, we already got Reflect up, we don't need to heal, we can swing with Psychic for some sneakily solid Psychic type damage. Last but not least, we have a Terra Raid staple, a Support Corviknight. Before we get into this build, I want to tell you a quick Dan joke or dad joke. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No odd deer. Now, if you're familiar with my streams, you're probably just pulling your hair out thinking, oh my God, I thought I escaped that joke by watching the videos. You did not. And if you want to hear more dad jokes while playing some Pokemon, make sure you tune into my streams. We'd love to do some terror raids or shiny hunting with you. But now, why the bird? Because it is boasting two immunities to Swampert's attacks. As a flying type Pokemon, it is immune to Swampert's ground type attacks. As a steel type Pokemon, it's immune to Swampert's poison type attacks. I'm giving it the leftovers health item just for some a little bit of recovery because this bird is mostly support. You could do a ton of different things with it. So as for our EVs, I have max HP EVs, max defense EVs, and the final four and attack. I have an impish nature to further increase our defense while lowering our special attack because we're not a special attacker. I'm using the uh, fantastic ability mirror armor. If Swampert at any point wants to lower our stats, I don't really, I'm not too worried about that, but it will reflect those stat changes right back at Swampert. Just an incredible ability. I don't think it will matter too much here. Our attacks, that's where things get interesting. I have Metal Sound here. Fake Tears would be better because it's more accurate, 
but I am now realizing while I'm reading it that fake tears would be better, and I'm already <laughs> put this video off long enough, so use fake tears over metal sounds. <laughs> Screech will uh, I'll lower the target's defense by two stages, just like metal sound does it, the special defense by two stages. Those only work while the shield is up though, so we have Rock Smash to further weaken Swampert for our physical, at uh, physical attacking allies while the shield is up. And Reflect will boost the physical bulk of Corviknight and its allies. The purpose of this Pokemon is to soften up Swampert for uh, all of our allies. It wants to keep Swampert at minus six special defense and defense the whole time. It's more effective next to physical attacking allied Pokemon. Corviknight has a ton of different really powerful moves, so there's a lot you can do with this. Let me know in the comments what Pokemon you are building to take down Severance or Swampert. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like, leaving a comment, or using Rock Smash on that subscribe button for more Dan Squared. <laughs> Thanks for watching and happy Swampert season!